Hi, today we're going to take a look at Unit 3, Lesson A, Exponent Product Rules. Today's objective is I can multiply powers that have the same base, I can raise a power to a power, and I can find the power of a product. But before we start getting into today's rules, we need to go over some vocabulary. And here we have 2 to the 5th power. And we're familiar with seeing this, but we want to make sure that we use the correct vocabulary when we talk about these things. The 2 is our base, and then we have the 5, which is our exponent, so the exponent is being applied to that base. Um, in the problems today and in future lessons, it's going to be real important that you're paying attention to whether a number or a variable is a base or an exponent, because they'll make a big difference in what your answer will be. But let's take a look at our first examples. The directions here say to evaluate, so when you see those directions, that means you're going to have to multiply it out to get a single number for your answer. So our first problem is 2 to the 5th power. So if we write that out first without exponents, this means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we can type this into our calculator just as we see it, or if you're using your graphing calculator or a scientific calculator, you can use that caret button um, and evaluate 2 to the 5th power. And when you hit enter, it should give you 32. If it doesn't give you 32, you're probably doing something wrong, so you want to probably check that out. Our next problem is negative fifth to the fourth power. This time we have a negative number that's being raised to an exponent. And when you start seeing those negative signs thrown in, we need to be extra careful. And we need to pay attention to whether that negative is also being raised to that fourth power. And here where it's inside the parentheses, the negative is included. So if we were to write this out, this can be rewritten as negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five. And again, if you're typing this into your calculator, you have to type it in exactly how you see it with those parentheses. If you don't have the parentheses, you will get a wrong answer. So if we evaluate this, we have 5 to the 4th power, and that gives us positive 625. Now number 3 looks very much like number 2, but notice it does not have parentheses. So this means that we're taking 5 and raising it to the 4th power and then putting a negative sign on that answer. So if we were to write this out without exponents, this means negative 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and that gives us negative 625. So again, notice how the negative sign makes a big difference, and we need to pay attention to those parentheses too. All right, so let's move uh, down this page, and we're going to go to our next section that is called Product of Powers. So here we have an example where we have a squared times a to the third power, or, or a cubed. And so if we multiply this out or write, write it out, a squared means a times a, and a cubed means a times a times a. Now, I want to rewrite this this time with just a single variable of a, but now I need to figure out how many x or what exponent I need. So I'm going to count my a's. One, two, three, four, five. So this will be a to the fifth power. But we're going to use this example so that we can come up with our next rule. So let's take a look at what we started off with. We started off with a squared times a cubed. Our exponents were two and three, and we ended up with a five. Notice that 2 plus 3 gives us 5. So when we are multiplying two things together that have the same base, we can simply just add the exponent. So that's our rule number 1. When multiplying two powers that have the same base, you add the exponent. So make sure you're writing that in, that we're adding those exponents. So let's go to our next example. The directions ask you to simplify and then evaluate if possible and write your answer in exponential form. So exponential form means that you're going to write an answer with exponents. So let's write ourselves a note here. That means with exponents. So our first example, number seven, is three cubed times three to the seventh power. We're multiplying two things together that have the same base, so our answer will have the same base and we're going to add those exponents. 3 plus 7 gives us 10. And then we can multiply that out using our calculators. 3 to the 10th power is 59,049. So our answer in exponential form is 3 to the 10th power, and we're evaluating this, and that gives us 59,049. 
Let's move to our next problem, number 8, x squared times x to the 6. They have the same base, so our base stays the same as x, and we're going to add our exponents. 2 plus 6 gives us 8. And this problem we don't have to worry about evaluating because the bases are variables. So we get to move on to our next problem. Here we have negative 6 times negative 6 squared. Notice that we have the negative 6 repeated, but that first negative 6 does not have an exponent written down. So if something doesn't have an exponent, you can just write a 1 in there. So now notice we have the same base, so we'll copy that down, negative 6. And because we're multiplying two of the same bases together, we add the exponents. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. So it's a good idea to write that 1 in because notice we had to add that 1 and 2 together to get 3. And sometimes if we don't write the 1 down, we forget about it. And some people want to write down the 2 for their answer. But our answer is really negative 6 to the third power. So now if we multiply this out, um, because the directions did ask us to evaluate this as po if possible, and it is possible here, our answer is negative 216. All right, let's turn the page and move on to our next rule for today. And here we're looking at powers of powers. So up top it says 3 squared cubed. So let's write this out and think about what this means. This means 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. And again, let's write this now without the exponent of 2. So 3 squared means 3 times 3, and then we get another 3 times 3, and then a third 3 times 3. And then I'm going to rewrite this now with just one base, but I need an exponent, so I'm going to count my 3's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can rewrite this as 3 to the 6th power. Well, just like before, let's think about how we got to the 6. We started with a 2 and a 3, which turned into a 6. So if we multiply 2 times 3, that gives us a 6. So that's going to get us to rule number 2. When there is one base, and more than one exponent, you must multiply, so let's write that in, the exponent. So let's take a look at our first example. Here the directions are just asking us to simplify. So we have one base of three, and we have two exponents, so the base stays the same. We'll multiply our exponents, four times two gives us eight. Notice here the directions don't ask you to evaluate, so you can leave your answer as three to the eighth. Next problem, we have x squared to the fourth power, so our base stays the same as x. We multiply our exponents to, again, get an 8. So we get x to the 8 for our answer. Next problem, we have negative 6 squared, then raised to the fifth power. Notice in this problem, we have brackets. Those same serve the same purpose as parentheses. They just look a little bit different so that it's not so confusing to look at if you have more than one set of parentheses. But let's start in the center here. And we have negative 6 squared. If you notice here, only the 6 is being squared. So we're just going to copy down that negative and then write down the 6. And then we have one base, two exponents. We'll multiply those together to get negative 6 to the 10th power. So be real careful with those negatives. Always ask yourself, what is that exponent being applied to? Is it just the number or is it also the negative? And here it was just the number 6 because there were no parentheses around the negative 6. Next uh, section here, we have power of a product, which is leading us to another rule for today. Um, let's first look at this example. We have AB cubed. So if we write that out without exponents, that means AB times AB times AB. But then we like to clean this up and write it with exponents. So if we count up our a's, we have 1, 2, 3 a's, which can be written as a cubed. And then we have 1, 2, 3 b's, which is b cubed. So let's look at rule number 3. When there is an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, you must apply that exponent to everything. I'll write that in. We're going to apply it to everything inside the parentheses. Notice that we started with an A and a B inside the parentheses, and both of them got cubed. So let's apply that to some examples here. <coughs> Number 19. There are a couple of ways of doing 19, but let's use this 
rule that we just learned where everything inside the parentheses gets that outside exponent applied to it. So the 5 gets cubed, and then so does the 7. And uh, let's go ahead and multiply this out. Technically, the directions um, don't ask us to evaluate, but let's have a little bit of fun with this one. Let's go ahead and evaluate this. We're going to have 5 cubed, and that gives us 125. And then we have to evaluate 7 cubed, and that gives us 343. And then we can multiply these two numbers together, and that gives us 42,875. So we did a little extra on this problem, but um, good practice evaluating those exponents. Let's go on to number 20. We have 9x to the 5th, y to the 4th squared. So everything inside the parentheses is being squared. So that includes the 9. So the 9 gets squared. Then we have x to the 5th that's being squared. So we have 1x and 2 exponents. So that means we have to multiply those exponents together to get x to the 10th. And then we have 1y base and 2 exponents. So we'll again multiply those exponents to give us y to the 8th. And let's go ahead and multiply out that 9 squared, which gives us 81 x to the 10th, y to the 8th. All right, number 21. Here we have another problem with negatives. Um, the negative is inside of the parentheses, so let's write this out as negative 4 squared, and then the y gets squared. And then we can evaluate negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16, and then the y squared. Now 22 looks just like 21, but notice the negative is outside of the parentheses. So that negative will not have that exponent of 2 applied to it. Only the 4 gets the exponent of 2. So that will be written down as 4 squared and then y squared. So when we write down our answer, we'll copy down that negative. 4 squared is 16, and then bring down our y squared. All right, we're almost done. We've got one last page, just a little bit over here. Um, last thing we're going to talk about is order of magnitude, and this is going to be the power of 10 nearest a quantity. So a couple of examples here. Um, if you're given the number 91,000, you want to look at these numbers here in the table and ask yourself which number is 91,000 closest to, and it would be closest to 100,000, so its order of magnitude would be 10 to the fifth. Or, if you're given 22,000, 22,000 is closest to 10,000, so its order of magnitude would be 10 to the 4th. So, let's apply this idea to one of our examples here. Example number 5 says, the order of magnitude of the radius of our solar system is 10 to the 13th. The order of magnitude of the radius of the visible universe is 10 to the 13th times as great find the approximate radius of the visible universe. So the visible universe is 10 to the 13th, so we'll write that down, times, telling us to multiply, as great as the previous um, value that they gave us here, uh, the order of magnitude to the radius of our solar system. So we're going to multiply those two together. So we're going to do 10 to the 13th times 10 to the 13th. So notice we have the same base of 10, so when we multiply, our base stays the same. We have two of the same base, so that means we have to add our exponents together. So 13 plus 13 gives us 26. And if we multiply that out, it gives us a rather large number. So we'll just leave that answer as 10 to the 26th power. So make sure you go down to the bottom of your sheet and fill in what you can do after watching this video. Write down all the questions that you still might have and what you're going to do to have those questions answered. We'll see you later.